This is step one, 2011, question one. We're asked to show that the gradient of the curve a over x plus b over y equals one, where b is not zero, is minus a y squared over b x squared. So let's look at the equation. Um, to try and find dy dx, we could differentiate implicitly, or we could rearrange uh, to find y in terms of x. So I'm gonna do the latter. So we've got ay plus bx equals xy by multiplying through by xy. And then rearranging this, we get bx equals y over x minus a, and y equals bx over x minus a. So remembering this, we can now differentiate using quotient rule. So using quotient rule, we've got x minus a times b, which is the derivative of the top, minus bx times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, over x minus a squared. And now note that we've got xb minus bx here, so it's just minus ab on the top, over x minus a squared. But note, it's not exactly the same as what we're trying to get. We want some y in there as well. So remembering, noting that there's no x minus a term here, we want to find x minus a in terms of, the, of y. So we've got this here, y equals bx over x minus a, which means we can write x minus a equals bx over y. So we get minus ab over bx over y all squared, and then squaring this and cancelling, we can cancel out the b's, move the y squared up top, and we get minus a y squared over bx squared as required in the question here. Now we're told that the point PQ lies on the line ax plus by equals 1, and also the curve a over, over x plus b over y equals 1, where a b is not 0. And we're asked to show that p equals plus minus q given that at this point the line and the curve have the same gradient so let's compare the gradient of the line and the curve so you've got the line and the curve here and looking at the line it has a fixed gradient um, as all lines do so let's rearrange to find y in terms of x so you get y equals minus a over b x plus one over b so it shows that the gradient of the line is minus a over b and we know what the curve's gradient is as well from before. So we can look at the point PQ and find the gradient of the curve at that point, which is minus AQ squared over BP squared, which would equal minus A over B, which is a constant gradient of the line here. And if we know, we know that neither A nor B is zero, since AB is not zero, we can just divide by minus A over B and multiply through by p squared, so we get q squared equals p squared. And that tells us that q is plus or minus p as required. We're also asked to show further that a plus b squared equals 1 and a minus b squared equals 1. So we haven't used another thing that we've told, been told in the question. We've used the fact that they have the same gradient at the line and the curve at the point pq. We also know that pq lie bo on both on the line and the curve. So pq is at the intersection of the line and curve. So using this fact, we can say that the line curve intersect at PQ. So considering the case P equals Q first, we can say that AP plus BP equals 1 and A over P plus B over P equals 1. So PQ lie on both the line and the curve. And this means taking out a P, we get P times A plus B equals 1 and 1 over P times A plus B equals 1 as well. And now we can consider, the, and, and now we can multiply the equations 1 and 2 together, giving us a plus b squared equals 1. And now we consider the case that p is minus q. So what can we say about p is minus q? We know that the point pq lies on both the line and the curve, so we sub it into our equations for the line and curve, getting ap minus bp equals 1 for the line, and a over p minus b over p equals 1 for the curve. So that gives us p times a minus b equals 1, equation 3, and 1 over p times a minus b equals 1 for equation 4. And multiplying equation 3 and 4 together, as we did before, we get a minus b squared equals 1. And so we've shown the conditions in the question. Now, for the second part of the question, we're asked to show that if the straight line ax plus by equals 1, where ab is not 0, is normal to the curve a over x minus b over y equals 1, then a squared minus b squared equals a half. So again, we've been walked through the steps in the first part, so we can mimic what we did in our first part to try and get this condition. Um, but notice now that we have, we're working with a normal to the curve, 
and we're working with a slightly a different curve, so it's a minus instead of a plus. So first thing we should do is note that the gradients, um, we can relate the gradients of the curves at uh, the point where the normal, the line is normal to the curve. So considering gradients, we will consider a general point MN where the line and curve cross, and that's where the line and curve are orthogonal to each other. So orthogonal here means they're at right angles to each other, i.e. the line is normal to the curve. And at this point, the gradients multiply to make minus 1. So now, considering the curve that we have, we have a over x minus b over y equals 1, which we can rearrange to make y equals bx over a minus x. And we can remember what we did previously um, to find the gradient of the curve. So have a go at this yourself. Uh, consider quotient rule and then subbing back in to get it in terms of um, x and y, like we did before. Okay, so working out dy dx, we get dy dx is ab over a minus x squared, and we know that a minus x squared can be written as bx over y, so subbing that in, we get dy dx is ay squared over bx squared, which is the same as a previous curve, um, but negative. And then we can consider the gradient of the line, which is the same as before, just minus a over b for the line ax plus by equals 1. And now at the point mn, we'll sub in the values m and n. We know that an squared over bm squared times minus a over b equals minus 1. And then solving this, we get a squared n squared equals b squared m squared. And then square rooting both sides, we get an equals plus minus bm. So there are two possible cases to consider. So now we've looked at the gradients, we have to remember that the point MN, our general point MN, lies on both the line and the curve. So we look at that intersection. So the fact that it lies on the line means that AM plus BN equals 1. And the fact that it lies on the curve means that A over N minus B over N equals 1. Which implies, if we multiply by MN, AN minus BN equals MN. So we'll call this equation 1 and we'll call this equation 2. So we consider two cases. First look at AN equals BM. So if an equals bm, we can plug this into equation 2, getting an minus an equals mn. So that gives us 0 is mn. However, we've said before, we've stated before, that the general point mn cannot be 0 because we have m and n at the bottom of these fractions here. So here's a contradiction, and an is not bm. So we consider the second case, an is minus bm. So if an is minus bm, we'll do the same thing as before and sub it into equation 2. So we get an plus an equals mn and 2an equals mn. So dividing through by n, which is not 0, 2a equals m. And we can do the exact same thing with uh, minus bm. We can put minus bm here, minus bm. So minus 2bm equals mn, and we'll get minus 2b equals m. So now we have these two equations, and uh, have a think of what you'll do with them. We haven't used equation 1 yet. OK, so we can sub these back into equation 1, actually. So into equation 1, we'll get 2a squared minus 2b squared equals 1. And then dividing through by 2, we finally get a squared minus b squared equals half, which is exactly what we were intending to get. And that's the end of the question.